I started boxing in late 50s, 1956. Some of the boys said they're going to fight in the Golden Gloves and wanted me to go train with them. So we got it to, uh, okay to use the back of the old gym that was there at the YOCA. So we met there in Asia in the afternoon and worked out. Well, when I first competed, I, uh, I made it to the championship finals and uh, I beat the boy that had won it the year before. So I was very fortunate. Made an imprint in my life because that's I just made a point that I, I wanted to do that, teach boxing. I started coaching when I was 20 years old. While Rayford may have realized his calling in life as a coach early in his career, he continued to compete at a national level. In 1964, he was runner-up at the Golden Gloves National Championship, losing to boxing great Harley Cooper. Cooper was all-service champion, had won the tournament the previous year and, after another Golden Gloves victory, qualified for the 1964 Olympics, but was unable to attend due to a medical issue. Rayford continued to compete and in 1967 was set to box in the Amateur Athletic Union's Regional Championship. Unfortunately, Rayford's father passed away and he was unable to attend. After that, all of his time at the gym became about coaching. When I started coaching, my lifelong dream was to have a national champion. I guess that's every coach's dream. And in 1978, Rayford found himself coaching two Golden Glove champions, Donald Bowers and Jackie Beard. Jackie Beard began boxing with Rayford when he was only nine years old. His older brother, Ricky, was already making a name for himself and soon their younger brothers, Aubrey and Obi, were spending most of their time at the gym as well. The Beards were some of the most dedicated boxers Rayford had ever worked with. Boxing was the only sport we were allowed to do pretty much. You know, we were coming, my dad had us working a lot and he would let us go to the gym. And boxing was our life, you know. I mean, we, we would spend every day in the gym, except the weekends and when we were going to a tournament, we would spend seven days a week in the gym. You know, it was like our second home, you know. We ate boxing, breathed boxing, I mean, that was it. Ricky competed in the Olympic trials in 1976, losing to a young Sugar Ray Leonard. But his enthusiasm for the sport seemed to drive his younger brothers to become even more dedicated. Ricky was the, was the core to me, as far as to me, and, I, and Obi and Jackie also, I, I think so, because, you know, if Ricky wouldn't have never came up to the gym and got involved in, into the gym, without a doubt, I know I wouldn't have, you know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, uh, Ricky kind of pulled Jackie on in, because Jackie wanted to be up under Ricky, and then, you know, and then it was like, we just kind of, me and Obi just kind of fell on the lawn, you know. In 1977, Jackie broke his jaw, but continued to train and served as Rayford's assistant coach. It was the next year when Jackie became the national AAU bantamweight champion and picked up a Golden Gloves championship. In 1979, he defended his AAU title as well as competed internationally, eventually becoming the Pan American champion. In 1980, he picked up his third AAU Bantamweight Championship. Hello, my name is Jackie Beard. I'm from Jackson, Tennessee. Competing in the Olympic trials in the World Champion because it also takes place and not being able to go to Moscow to the Olympics. And in Moscow, Beard was expected to win a gold medal, one of only six men in history to win three consecutive national AAU championships. Beard meets Petty. At the 1980 Moscow Olympics, Jackie was heavily favored to win a gold medal in boxing. Unfortunately, President Jimmy Carter organized a boycott of the Olympics in response to the Soviets' war in Afghanistan. Rayford was even picked to coach the boxing team at the Olympics. This missed opportunity would haunt Jackie throughout the remainder of his career. That hurt a lot of people, the whole team really, you know. It hurt them financially, and, and, and they wanted to bring their gold medal home. You know, when you do something all year long, and then all of a sudden, 
something happened and you can't, you know, it's not many, you can't wait four more years. You know, your body may not be able to hold up to it. After the missed 1980 Olympics, Jackie decided it was time to start his professional career and move to Detroit to begin training. Constantly keeping in his weight class was beginning to wear him down and without any Olympic medals, his early fights were far less lucrative than they should have been. People don't understand, when you go to the Olympics and you win the gold medal, man, it's, it's like your first professional fight, maybe 100000 where if you don't go, you may be lucky to get 5000 So when you're looking at money, it makes a big difference uh, going to the Olympics. Despite his initial setbacks, Jackie picked up a string of victories against some fairly experienced opponents. By 1986, he only had one loss and was competing for the WBC Continental America Super Featherweight title. The match ended in a loss for Jackie, but he was still dedicated and continued to train for a title match. In 1989, he found himself boxing Brian Mitchell for the WBA World Super Featherweight title. Mitchell was a very skilled opponent and Jackie struggled to land a punch. The fight ended in another setback for Jackie. His spirits were crushed. He trained even harder and found himself in the best shape of his life. Less than a year later, he was once again facing Brian Mitchell for the World Super Featherweight title. Man, everything's standing in round one. Before the fight, I had fun and feel it. I felt like I was tired of it. It's true, man. I felt like I was tired. Couldn't get loose. I felt like I was down in the round. Jackie struggled to force his muscles to comply. He could see Mitchell swinging, but it was almost powerless to stop it. His entire body simply moved too slowly. The real fight became the struggle within himself. Each moment was a battle to make his body react. He thought he had been poisoned or drugged somehow. Something was wrong with Jackie, and he didn't know what. The fight ended in a complete loss, and afterward he went to a series of doctors who could never find anything wrong with him. He kept training, hoping he could get through with this. But after several defeats, he finally came to the conclusion that it was time to retire. Boxing been good. Boxing been good to me. I travel well, experience life, uh, met a lot of people, done a lot. I've learned a lot, a whole lot. Uh, I'm just beginning my journey. It builds dedication and, and the character, man. It just. People need to know what this program does for kids a lot of times, you know. It keeps them off the street. You know, when, you, when you're poor and you don't have a whole lot, you have to take that frustration out somewhere. You, can't, you don't need to take it out in the street. Bring it in the gym and, and, and take it out on some of your buddies or something. Take it out on the bag or something. But you know, this program is a great program. It helps a lot of kids. It, it, it's helped me. Uh, I wouldn't take anything for it, you know. It's taught me how to be a man, taught me how to take defeat, because you're not going to win them all. You know, and it taught, it's taught me how to never give up, you know, keep pushing, you know, and those things that you believe in, you can make them become a reality. That's what it's taught me.